Hello, everybody. So, I'm gonna be honest, I'm not excited for this comeback. I, I'm quite worried, actually, because usually when I go into a comeback, I go completely blind. I don't have any sort of spoilers. I don't listen to, like, the concept, anything. Um, but I did watch their Right Here tour in Goyang, and they did perform all of their unit songs in the title track. And... I don't like the title track, y'all. I don't like it. Um, and I have mixed feelings on the unit tracks. So, not really, I don't know. I wanna, I, I wanna believe in, in Woozy and him saying that he's not gonna disappoint us, but I also have not been very like, yay about their last comebacks as well. So, I'm very open to being proven wrong. I would love to love this album, but I don't, I don't know if that's in the cards today. But we're gonna still listen to it. We're gonna listen to it properly, listen to the lyrics get like the full experience, um, watch the music video, because I saw a couple spoilers on Twitter that there's some Minwon in the music video, so I'm very excited for that. Perhaps that will make up for the DJ Khaled feature. But we're gonna get into it. Before I share any more thoughts, we're just gonna get right into it. We're gonna start with the first song, which I have not heard, Eyes on You. We can get in the what? Verdant what? That was definitely a song. I don't know. I feel like... I feel like I don't want to be unnecessarily rude. Because at the end of the day, I want to make it so clear. I love Seventeen. I love Seventeen. They can put out album after album after album of flops, and I would still love 17. I want to make that so clear. I love 17, and I've locked in. I, I have a, an annual membership. I have a tenure in Carrot Land, okay? It's Rose Quartz and Serenity until the day I die, okay? I'll make that so clear. This isn't a good song. <laughs> it's not a bad song, but there's nothing about this song that I think is good or interesting. It's a fine song. It's a song that I feel like would be, like the background music in a Euphoria episode. But that's the thing, it's like, it's not even like good club music. It's like a very house sort of sound, but I don't think it's like good or interesting. Cause I love house music. I love a good Charlie XCX moment, but I feel like this is just very much like, not even like Euphoria. This is a song that would be played in like a soul cycle class. Like it just has a very steady, consistent BPM where you could just like really like bike to it. And I think the lyrics are not great. I don't know. It's kind of boring. I don't think any of the lyrics were exceptional. But hold on, let's go. Let's double check with Miss 17 translations and see if perhaps there are better lyrics in this translated version. I hope so. No. Yeah, this is yeah, no the lyrics are what I thought. <laughs> I do think Vernon's versus Oh, Vernon, what do you even mean? Who let the dogs out after bedtime? Do you understand what the original phrase means, sir? Who let the dogs out? Like calling men dogs? I don't think that's the vibe that you want to bring into this song. Also, calling anything a shindig, unironically, is crazy. Like, who let the dogs out after bedtime sounds like a bad thing. When you understand what the phrase, who let the dogs out, means. I feel like who let the dogs out after bedtime is something that a female rapper would say, like, about men out in the streets. Like, who let these dogs out after their bedtime, after their curfew? These men should be at home. Because they're dogs. I don't think he understands when he says that what that means. Because I feel like this song is supposed to be very sweet, very cute, being like, oh, I want to know everything about you, I want to get to know you. And then that line, I feel like, is not, we're not on the same level. We're not on the same page. So yeah, I don't know. I don't like the song. I don't think anything about it is good or exceptional. <laughs> Which sounds bad, but like, instrumentally, I don't like it. Melody, I don't like it. Vocally, nothing exciting there. Lyrics, not good. <laughs> I also feel like the concept of the song is boring, because if I'm thinking of a, like, a I, I want to know everything about you sort of song, there's a lot of songs that come to mind that are, like, really good with that exact same concept, and this song is just a song that is written and produced and put out into the world. I think maybe if it was instrumentally stronger, I would feel better about this song, but it's not. I, again, I feel like it's very just sort of boring. I don't know. Like, there's nothing going on interesting that's cool or interesting. It's not even, like, good house music because it's not strong enough in the noise factor. It's very toned down. It's very, like, washed out house music. It is globally appealable, not offensive house music. And I feel like house music needs to be a little bit more aggressive to be good. It just feels very toned down, very diluted. I don't like the song. <laughs> so... 
We're just gonna move on then. We're gonna move on to the song that I already know that I don't like. Money, f love, money, fame. But maybe the music video will be good. Maybe, maybe I'll enjoy the music video. So, jog on! No, jog on! I need him back right now! I miss him so bad, it's not even funny. Okay, we're gonna watch it once. No words. And then watch it again with word. I miss you, jog on. I miss your long, beautiful blonde hair. I'll go back and read that in a second. Oh, I love your Instagram. Ooh! Look at those arms! I hate this fuck ass tag. Love them one. DJ Khaled! Goofy as hell! He's lucky he's fine. Robbed? Oh. They're so not American. Didn't he grow up in LA? Doesn't he know? I'm not, I'm not gonna harp on it. A lot of Korean people are, or Korean idols are really doing this whole headscarf sort of moment. But it scares me every time I see it. Cause I'm just like, are you wearing a do-rag? Minwon! <laughs> Minha looks good. <laughs> Is the implication that they're on the phone with each other? I like that. Jin! I miss you, Chogan. I miss you so much, Chogan. Let's go, Wanu. Oh, they're lucky they look good. Okay, Vernon. Arms out. Ugh. Ugh. Wanu's so, so glad he's pretty. God, I don't like that song! Okay, we go watch it one more time with the words. And then we go share our opinions. Sound good, sound good, sound good. Okay. Oh shit, wait, there's words. Choosing love over money and fame is easy to say but hard to do. Without deep genuine love, it can feel nearly impossible. So how to love and how do you express it? Is that what it says on the paper? We'll go back and we'll check it later. You don't see it. I hate the song. <laughs> it does look like they're supposed to be on the phone together, which I think is very cute. <laughs> I love a water sensor. I'm so mad that they're not actually dancing in the rain. I think I would feel better about this song and that shot if they were. Is that even Woozy? Who is that? Why is he barely in the shot? Imagine if they used a body double and that wasn't actually him. I think that'd be really funny. Okay. That's the full song. We're gonna go back and we're gonna look at the things. Anyway, let's go back and read whatever Drunkon's note says. Oh, oh, it's a cursive. Figure out something feeling to you, something, something, how to do it, how to do it right. It's hard to put my emotions into words and I worry that what I say might not fully capture how I feel, but I still think it's important something something even if the words something something to try even if the words aren't perfect i think it's very funny that they put jogan in this scene the implication that he not only writes in english but with a quill and ink and in cursive very funny what river is that rosen court he's driving for four and a half hours <laughs> that's so many hours dude also in this is is this scene supposed to signify that Mingyu drives his car off a cliff bridge into a ocean and then they had to yeah like pull his car out of the river hey i'm something something i'm at the something where we last met so many things have changed from then some for the better some for the worse no matter what i'll always be here for you because to me love is about experiences also maybe it's just because i'm too american but i do think getting robbed at gunpoint as like a silly little goof that's in bad taste Call me American, but I don't think that gun violence is funny. <laughs> plane crash. No planes. No injuries were reported except a broken heart. Fuck. <laughs> I do like Vernon's verse. Vernon's verse is good. That's the only part of the song that I like. Freaking his arms like a crash by the writer's crush. I don't like the song. Or the concept. <laughs> A discussion between two celebrities about the importance of... What does that last word say? I'm gonna assume it says love. I really can't read it. Love is sincerity, not size. Which is a crazy thing to say, because then I saw somebody make a very funny joke. 
Uh, Twitter about that. Love is pushing forward. Love is you, you, you. Love is everything. Love is unstoppable. Love is go. Go say. Love is go say. Love is taking risks. Love is exploding emotions. Love is experiencing. Love is undefinable. Love is forever. Love is sharing. Very cute. Very cute. Okay. Yeah, I don't like this song. Um... <laughs> I think the DJ Khaled feature sounds and is goofy, and I think because DJ Khaled, I am assuming, produced and or heavily influenced the composing of this song, it doesn't sound like a Seventeen song. It truly doesn't. Like, if you played this song for me, and you didn't tell me it was by Seventeen, or you, like, put- it, you had anybody else cover it, I could not assume that this was a Seventeen song. It does not sound like a Seventeen song at all, and I think that is a bad thing, because I think Seventeen songs sound good and are not, like, even one definable sound, but there's nothing in this song that feels Seventeen at all. It feels like they're singing a cover of another song. Nothing in this feels like them. It feels very devoid of their own style and personal flair. I think the song is goofy. I think the concept is goofy, because even if, like, I would have taken a song in which they were like, we fuck bitches get money. Way before I would have expected a song about this because then I was like, okay, you're swinging big and I appreciate taking that risk. This song is so lame. The concept that's like, I only need you in this world. Everything, I could lose everything else and I, I, I'll be fine if I have your love. Everybody's made a song about that. They've made many songs about that. So I think out of, like, even just comparing this song to other songs of the same concept, boring, lame, boo, womp womp. Um, I also think vocally, not interesting at all. Instrumentally, same with the first song, very boring. And again, I think that has to do with the DJ Khaledness of it all. It sounds like, it doesn't sound like a song that they would make. It's a very, very boring sounding song. I think also the choreography is very boring, but I, I'm not going to blame that specifically just on Seventeen because I've been seeing that a lot recently with like different K-pop comebacks. And I worry it's because K-pop companies have seen how profitable it is when you have like a viral dance trend on TikTok. And they're worried that if they make dances too hard that nobody wants to like do the dances. And I've heard like different idols talk about that where they were like, it's so, it's too hard. So we have to make like an easier version because nobody wants to do the dance. And I'm like, I guess, but like now all the dances look so boring because they're watered down for anybody on TikTok to do. And I'm like, isn't the whole point of being a performer that you're doing dances that not everybody can do because it's your job and your profession and a skill that you're good at? I don't know, that's my hot take. And I think overall this music video is kind of boring, but I've been feeling that way about 17 music videos recently. They've been feeling very saturated. They're very sanitized. That's the word I'm looking for. They're feeling very sanitized. Where it just is like, there's no heart in it. They're just like on a set and the set is very clean and the overuse of CGI is pissing me off. If they wanted to dance in the rain, they should have actually had them dance in the rain like they did in Ready to Love. I just feel like before they used to like actually shoot on like location or like shoot in different sets and like it looked really visually interesting and like maybe it's also like the color grading and like the editing style. It just feels, I don't know, it feels very sanitized. It feels very boring. It feels very heartless these music videos recently, but specifically this video. I think everything after Sonogong just felt very like, oh, okay. <laughs> but I feel like this video worst of all, and I have to simply blame DJ Khaled for it. I really think that if we didn't focus on a DJ Khaled feature, also out of everybody, DJ Khaled? Why? Ugh. Out of all people that you could, out of all Western artists that you could have had feature on your song, DJ Khaled? A man that not only sucks, but will add nothing to your song? Crazy. Crazy choice. Because there are plenty of artists, plenty of Western artists that are really famous that, like, suck. But, like, if you had a feature with them, I would understand why. Because they would probably bring in something to your song, like, musically or, like, notoriety-wise. DJ Khaled is adding nothing to this song. Nothing to this song absolutely nothing to this song. He is actively making it worse with his stupid producer tag before and after the song. I hate it. I hate it so bad. I don't like the song at all and I worry that they are going to perform it on tour and I'm going to have to sing along. The AO part isn't bad. That's about as much praise as I can give the song. I don't like it at all. Um, I think Vernon's verse is good now that I've like read and understood the lyrics. I think that his verse is really well written, which is so relieving coming after his last one where I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, I don't like the song. Moving on. <laughs> 1 to 13, please be good. Last song I haven't heard, please be good. <laughs> Why does everything sound like a remix? Everything sounds like a bad remix now. Oh, 
Aww. Not bad. I don't love the instrumentals. Again, I think the instrumentals are very boring. Which is such a shame because I feel like Seventeen has had such good instrumentals in the past. Such good composing. And it's been like, they've given us songs that like sound good and interesting. And I feel like these three group songs, so boring. So boring in instrumentals. It's not like they were given like, like not even like a demo instrumental, but like those pre-recorded tracks that you get on like, like a, a Yamaha keyboard. You know, when you just play like, you press play on like the pre-recorded track and it just gives you like a beat and a very standard melody. It sounds like they just took that, added nothing to it, and sang the song. That being said, I do like the lyrics. I think the lyrics are cute and sweet. It's another song for the fans, blah, 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 blah. I do wish that the chorus was just like a little bit more like popped up. Cause I really think it would have been fun and interesting if it was like, you make my heart beep. And then like, it was just, they said beat. There were like a couple more ad libs. I feel like the ad libs are really missing in this song. I feel like the ad libs are really missing in general. I feel like I'm not getting anything in the background that's fun and interesting. I think if they did like a little electronic moment, I think that would have sounded good and or sounded cool and or sounded more interesting than the song than the song already gives us because i feel like if it was like you make my heart beat and then like they they took the last part of beat and like glitched it a little bit i think that would sound cool and fun because i feel like that would go with the vibe of the song but i don't know it's a fine song i'd say if the other two songs if the title track is like a, a two out of ten and the first track is maybe like a three out of ten this is like a, a five out of ten so it's better than the last two songs, but the last two songs I feel like set the bar really low. I don't think, okay, the lyrics cute, not good. I don't think that there was ever a lyric that, where I was like, oh my god, slay, you ate with the writing. But again, let's double check 17 translations, maybe there's something good in here? No. That's okay. I do like the, you make my day, you make my dawn. I think that's a very cute reference. Um, I also think that this song is very sweet, considering, you know, what we're going through right now. Is this song sweet and cute? Yes. Is this song good? I'm probably not gonna stream it, but that's just me. We have to simply move on, because I'm, I'm tired of talking about these songs that I don't like. We're gonna talk about uh, the vocal theme song, Candy. I have heard this song, but let's, let's give it a proper listen before I share any opinions. I'm gonna hear John sing. time and care and dedication spent into making these instrumentals sound good and they sound beautiful and the past three songs did not get that type of care and attention very pretty song very pretty song now i think i like it more now that i've sat i've listened to it i've appreciated it i just think it's not for me i think that this is a great beautiful song beautiful song i think it's very understated i feel like sometimes songs Especially now, I feel like a lot of K-pop songs are just like, WE ARE IN YOUR FACE! And I feel like I appreciate when a song can be like, actually no, we're gonna stand in the background, we're gonna be cool and mysterious, and we're gonna be, we're gonna do a little bit less, but we're gonna give you a little bit more. And I really like that. I feel like this song, very, it's not simple, it's like, clean. In the way that like, minimalists do not not have things, they're just very clean with it. It's very minimalistic, but in a good way. I think the vocals are beautiful everybody sounds so good everybody sounds absolutely stunning instrumentals gorgeous i like how there's a big instrumental break in the middle i usually don't but i like how it just you just like let you're sitting you're 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 allowed to sit with the music appreciate the beautiful piano and then it goes into a key change gorgeous gorgeous song that being said i don't think that these songs are for me slower songs like these i don't really lean towards but i feel like i think in comparison to some of the other ballads that they've done this is this one leans towards my favorite it just it just sounds so good it's so precise i think i would compare the song ironically enough because it's called candy to like a macaroon like a macaroon you think looks so simple and easy to make because of how it's just like a simple dome of like the the, the cookie part but how like technically brilliant you have to be to make something that perfect and simple and smooth that's how i feel about this song it's beautiful 
And I didn't love it before when I was first listening to it, like, during their concert, because I was just like, oh my god, another fucking ballad from the vocal team. And, like, I know that that's a crazy thing to say, but I just, like, wish that we could switch up the vibe. Like, I get that they're the vocal team and that their whole thing is, like, they are singers, first and foremost, TM. But, like, I like when the vocal team gets to do, like, a more upbeat, fun song, because I feel like the upbeat, fun songs only get to go specifically to the hip-hop team, but, like, to, like, the other two units, and, like, they never get to do, like, an upbeat, fun song. So, like, I would love to see the hip-hop team do a ballad and the vocal team get, like, a fun like upbeat song and i get that because mostly just because i think coming after carrot land we've seen that they can do those other things and i'm like so then why can't we just from the jump give the vocal team a song in which like it's upbeat and fun but they're also like singing and like why can't the hip-hop team give us another track like trauma but also like more stripped back where like they are rapping but it's like a, a slower sad more ballad-ish song that's just how i feel i'm like I feel like every time we get a vocal team song, it's the same type of ballad. And I am just like, not that I'm bored, I just wish that they got more variety in the music that they make for the vocal team. But that being said, like I just said, I think this song, after giving it time to like sit and appreciate in my mind, I prefer this song over some of their other ballads. It's very pretty. It also feels very Christmassy. I don't know how to describe it. It's It sounds and feels like a Christmas song. It's very like... Dun, 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 dun. In, in my mind, that it just feels very Christmassy. I don't know. I do like this song, though. Quite good. I definitely like it more than, I think, their last vocal team song. Let me see. Vocal team unit. Yes, I feel like compared to their last two unit songs, I like this song more. I like this song more than Dust and more than Yawn. But I think that's just what I mean. Like, coming after Yawn, where I feel like Yawn is very similar in, like, vibe to Candy, I was just like doing this again but i do feel i do get where like dust is like very upbeat wasn't didn't they have another song though that's what am i thinking cheers to youth yes that's also their song so i guess they do have some variety i don't know i just feel like whenever i'm hearing a ballad it's from the vocal team and i just would love for another team to get a ballad just one good ballad from another team but i guess that's like not really the point i don't know what i'm complaining about anymore ignore me i think that the song is good it's a very pretty song that being said, if we're comparing it to some of their other songs, see, I feel like they were on such a good, uh, such a good streak. Hug, Second Life, Same Dream, Same Mind, Same Night, and Imperfect Love are beggars. Beggar after beggar after beggar after beggar after beggar. And I feel like this song can sit at the table with those four songs. I don't think that Dustin Young are that good. I also don't particularly love Cheers to Youth. I, I think I like it the most out of the unit songs from the last album. But I, oh, no, Yogi Ocean View. I don't know, the performance team is on a, is on another level recently. But I'm just I'm just thinking about the vocal team songs like in the vocal team discography. I just really wish that they had more of an upbeat song. Like not just like a happy upbeat song like Cheers to Youth. Like I want them to do something with like power. Like I'm trying to think. Like I would love for them to do something like fast pace. Something where it's like not necessarily R and B inspired, but like I want them to do like a like, maybe, like, a Neo-type song, where, like, I'm in the rain, and it's, like, ballad but it's not, like, slow. Like, an up-tempo ballad, I think, is what I want from them. Something with a little bit more energy, but still has, like, really good vocals. I don't feel like we've gotten something like that from them, and I think that they would really eat with that. But I feel like whenever they do a ballad, it's a very, like, slow, serious, like, somber kind of vibe. And I wish that we got something a bit more happy and upbeat while also being, like, vocals. That's it. But this song is very good. So I'm not really complaining about anything. The song is quite good. Um, very, very beautiful vocals. I miss Jungkook so much. I miss him so much. His voice is so pretty. I miss him so bad. Okay, next song is Rain. Rain, out of the three unit songs that I already heard because I watched the concert, is my favorite. It is so good. Rain is incredible. And if the lyrics do not add up or match up to the incredibleness of the song itself, I will be quite upset. Such a good fucking song! This beat! The bass! So good! I didn't hear June sing. Oh my god, thank god. I robbed! I robbed! I should have seen June from all the song! Oh, it's so good! This song is so good! This song is so good! Y'all, this song is so good that it is making me buy this album. I can say with no irony, no hyperbole, if this song was 
bad, if like they didn't have like such an exceptional performance team song on this album, I would not have bought this album. That's how much I do not like the other songs that I was like, I don't need this album. But this song is so good that I have to buy this album. That is how good that this song is carrying this entire album for me. This because this album in my mind is such a wash. Is such a wash. I could have I could have been very happy just completely forgetting that it ever came out and that it ever existed if it were not for this song. That's how fucking exceptional this song is. This song is so good. I love the performance team. That's the thing. I talked about it in like all of my seventeen videos, but like at, in the early stages, performance team songs. Not good, not good. But recently, every single performance theme song has been a banger. We forget back to back. We don't need to talk about back to back. I don't like that song. I, I don't care about that song. But every song recently that the performance team has come out with has been absolutely so exceptional and has been fighting for like my favorite song on the album. And that's crazy because I am a tried and true hip hop team girly. Me and S-Coops are locked in. I love the hip hop team. But the performance team has such good songs. Are, they're so good, and it and it kills me because June isn't even there. I am so upset. I want to see a performance with June, and I want to see a rain performance with June so bad. I I think I need it, or I'll go insane. Because the stage for this, so good. The outfits, the 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 set design, the choreography, the fucking vocals, the the vibe, the instrumentals. I love this song. I love this song. It's so absolutely exceptional song perhaps my favorite that's a crazy thing to say my favorite performance theme song because i don't understand why i love you so good this song is so good that i do think it's crazy that they chose to perform this song and lily how by we need to let that song die that's my hot take i never liked that song and i don't think i ever will i think that song needs to not make it to the u.s set list i think the u.s set list needs to have i don't understand but i love you and and rain if, the, if those are the only two songs we got from them i will i'll be happy i will not complain because those two songs are so good but even then, as long as I get to see the song live, I will be happy because it's so, oh, that's how exceptional it is. Yeah, Jam Jam, Oh My God, Shining Diamond, Highlight, Swimming Fool, My Eye, and Lily Yabai. I don't like any of those songs. <laughs> Their first seven unit songs, I don't like any of them. I don't listen to any of them. But then we hit, hot, but then we hit Moonwalker and they said, we're not fucking around no more. They said, we're here to, we're here to win. Cause Moonwalker and sh and okay, I don't love 24, well, no, I'm thinking I'm thinking of 24 set, 24 hour. No, 24 7 is a great song. Moonwalker, exceptional. Wave, exceptional. Pong, I love Pong. The fact that we haven't gotten a song like Pong ever again makes me so sad. Because Pong was like cute and fun. Cute, fun, silly, campy. Where are the cute, fun, silly, campy songs? We need to give the vocal team a cute, fun, silly, campy song. That's what I want to hear. Which is, I think it's crazy because Sungwon and DK are the are cute, fun, silly boys. They love to be cute, fun, and silly. So the fact that we don't have a cute, fun, silly song. And Jungon, Jungon? Little mischievous Jungan is also on the vocal team, and we don't have a cute, fun, silly song for the vocal team. That makes no sense to me. That doesn't make any sense to me. We need to rectify that immediately. Anyways, I don't understand. But I love you. Absolutely exceptional. They stepped their pussy up with that one, and then back to back, we forget that that song exists because I don't like that song at all. Um, and it's smell Yogi Ocean View. So good. But this song, I honestly, honestly, honestly. This might be my favorite performance theme song. It's that fucking good. Rain is so good. I think I do like it more than I don't understand, but I love you. Even though that song, exceptional, it's a very close second. I think that I don't understand, but I love you and Rain should be in holy matrimony until the end of time. But if I had to pick only one song, it would be Rain. It would be Rain. Rain is so good. So good. Every, every aspect of it is absolutely exceptional. The vocals eat down. The instrumentals, the vibe, it's just like, it's such like a good, like, almost 80s synthy sort of, like, R&B slow jam vibe. It's so good. And it fits their vibe so well. It's such a performance team song. It's so good. This is the best they've ever done. I love the performance team so bad. Okay. Lyrics. Lyrics. 17 translations. I apparently was not listening to the lyrics because, oh my god, even the lyrics are exceptional. I didn't realize that this was such an angsty song because the vibe is so good. The vibe is so good that I didn't even realize that this was a very sad song. Basically being like, nobody gets me. I'm alone in my room and every day feels the same. I feel empty. Your heart is frozen. Your heart is rusty because it doesn't work. That the, the bridge, I wonder if my heart is broken. I don't even feel anything. I wonder what meaning I have a night where I can't find it. That's crazy. That's crazy. Y'all ate with this one. Y'all ate with this one. 
It's a night where I want to make a call, but I have nowhere to call. Bro! I draw the curtains closed and sit in an empty room. Ah! Oh, so good. And then, like, the rain, don't stop the rain, like, until the rain can, like, wash away all of these feelings. Oh, so good. So good. Incredible. Please tell me that everybody has a writing credit on this song. It's so good. Dina Hoshi Woozy. Dina Hoshi Woozy Pumzu. Dina Hoshi Woozy Pumzu. Yeah. They ate. They ate the fuck down with this one. That's how you know. The, the, sometimes you listen to, you, lo you look at a song's writing credits and it's, like, 12 people. Very few people touch the song because that's how perfect it is. They had to lock down the kitchen so that they could cook. It's so good. This is such a good song. Absolutely exceptional. And it's angsty. It's so sad. Oh, I love, those are my favorite songs in which like you listen to the song and you're like, oh my God, happy, fun, upbeat. And then you read lyrics and you're like, oh no. Those are my favorite fucking songs. So good. Absolutely exceptional. The performance team really outdid everybody on this song. They are carrying, once again, they're carrying this album for me. I also would love to specifically give props to Ming Hao because I was watching the concert and I feel like maybe it's the way that they split up like jong -on and Jun's parts, but I feel like they gave a lot more parts to Ming Hao and he's really shining in this era. Now that I can like see him do more things, incredible vocals, incredible stage presence, incredible like dancing, like Ming Hao's really like stepping up and like eating this era. And I love to see it. As somebody who's always been rooting for Ming Hao to have his moment, beautiful, beautiful. Him specifically in this song, I think is really a standout member. Like he looks so good in this in the in the stage that they do. <sighs> they all eat, obviously, but I feel like, as I've said in the past, Jungan, Joshua, June, and V8 have not really been given the moments that I feel like the other members have been given. So and I feel like it's rectified a lot more now, but like it really showed in like the early like debut era. But now that like jong -on and Jun are not here, which is heartbreaking, I feel like Ming Hao is given more of a chance to like have his moment. And he like got to like do a lot of like the, the intros and like the, the talking and the ments like throughout the concert. I just feel like they're really giving like Ming Hao all of his flowers finally. And I just, I love to see it. I love to see it. And I feel like in this song, this is his, this is his song. He eats. He eats! It's such a good song. I wish I could talk about it forever, but we simply must move on to water, which is a crazy thing to follow up rain with. I don't want to share my opinions. I don't want to show my hand too too quickly because I want to give the song the moment that it deserves, like all, every other song. But I do think it's crazy that after having a hit song called Fire, you put out a song called Water. And it's only two and a half minutes. Sick! I think also a very telling thing is that there are only two songs on this album that reach three and a half minutes, or does that, does it reach three and a half minutes with the music video? Let me, let me, let me actually run that back. Let me run back my opinion before I double check it. Yeah, no. The only song that's like consistently above three minutes because the title track is like six seconds over three minutes. The candy is three seconds over three minutes. Rain is 320 is the longest song on this album. And I think it shows and I think it deserves it because I don't get why we're doing so many sub three minute songs. I don't know why why that's become such a thing. I think we need to get rid of it. I think we need to bring back actually the very long songs. The six minute songs, we gotta bring them back. But I think that's another reason why Rain is so perfect. It is the proper length of a proper song. It is perfect in length. And I think also because Candy has that long instrumental break in the middle. So like if you're really just counting like singing time, Rain by far has the most amount of time. I think that's another reason that adds to the excellence of Rain is that Rain is a proper full length song and not like water that's two and a half minutes long. Absolutely ridiculous, but anyways, we gotta get into it. Get into it. I don't love a repetitive chorus. Every time I see that X number get higher, first it was four times, now it's five times, now it's eight times I'm chanting water. And that's the full fucking song. That's it, that's the whole song. The song's over now. I'm going to comfortably say this is my least favorite hip hop team song. <laughs> it's so boring. It's so boring. And I, I, I don't wanna say I hate it because I feel like that's a really strong word because there are parts of it that I do like and I, at the end of the day, once again, love the hip hop team, but I really do not like this song. There is nothing to like about this song. The lyrics are boring. The instrumentals are boring. I think S. Coop's rap was kind of cool and I like the pre-chorus. I like the, I'm taking over. I think that part's good. I hate the chorus. 
I hate it so bad. And I hate that this song doesn't even reach three minutes and half of it is them just chanting, water, water. You're a writer, you're a rapper, write some more words into the song. I think crazy thing to say, because I've never said this before. And I, in fact, I've spoken the opposite many times. Mingyu's first the best. Which is crazy. Crazy! Mingyu's verse is the best verse! Because consistently, Vernon and Escoops, as I said, as I believe personally, have been the strongest rappers, the best writers. But theirs are just like, I don't like their verses in this. I think Mingyu's is the best. The overflowing popularity line, really clever, really good. The only we can make him sweat, turn it up, I'll make you hotter, get in sucked in, get sucked in deeper like water. Good. That's a good, that's a good section. I don't really get water's section, and then I feel like Escoops is, and Vernon's is just like, I don't know. Imagine Mingyu doesn't even have a writing credit. Okay, good, he does. Nobody else touched the song, and I fear we should have let Woozy into the, into the studio when they were cooking. Maybe it would have been a little bit better, because the writing credits are just the hip-hop team and Bumzu, and there's not, Woozy didn't touch the song, and I think it shows. I think it shows that Woozy didn't touch this song. It's not good! It's not good! I'm sorry, it's not good. It's not a good song. It's really boring. It's, like, instrumentally so lame. And especially because, because, like, also, you would think that this song is similar to Fire. And is like, in many ways, it is. Because they have a very chanty chorus for Fire as well, where they're going, Fire, Fire, Fire! But, like, that song is good! It, like, has, it has a good beat, it has a good rhythm. This song is not good. I'm sorry. I hate to say it. You hate to see it because I love the Bob Doom. This is not a good song, which really sucks because it's their most recent comeback, which means that they are going to definitely perform it on tour. And I hate that because they have so many other better unit songs that should take this place. Water should not deserve or get a spot on the set list. It doesn't deserve it. It's a bad song. It's a bad song. Like, is Ah Yeah good? No. Do I think it's better? than water, 100%. Because at least that one had words. And at least that song reached three and a half minutes. Fronting, pretty good. Lean on me. No, lean on me is what I mean when I say that other units need um, balance. I don't think I like if I. But even then, you would listen to the flow of that song, good. The flows in water are whack as shit fucking hate it. I don't like that song at all, and I really don't want to be, like, so, like, over the top with it, but I really do not like that song. I really don't like it. I would, and that, I think it's because I love the hip-hop team so much that it's making me so upset that that song is bad. Because it, it could be so good. They've made really good songs in the past, but Water is just, like, so bad. It feels like a demo. It feels like they were like, yeah, we have this idea of a song, and then they were like, let's print it and put it on the album. No! Mm, that song needed like at least three more rounds of rewrites and re-recordings like it's it's not it's not giving what i think it needs to give i hate this song more than chili and if you've seen my video on that album i hate chili i hate that song but at least that song was good out of the context of everything at least that song had like interesting metaphors and a fun like instrumental beat water's giving us nothing giving us Nothing! It's just making me so upset because they have so many better songs. Like, Back It Up, Game Boy, I Can't Run Away, which I don't feel like they've ever really performed. Again, another ballad. I feel like some of the other units d need a ballad. I Can't Run Away. It's not my favorite song, but it's a beautiful song. Back It Up, Game Boy, Fire Monster. Four incredible unit songs that are better than Water. I don't like La La Lee. I don't. I don't. It's not bad. I just don't personally like it. But I would take La La Lee over Water. I would take so many other unit songs before Water. I would take Chili before Water. Y'all, you don't understand how crazy that sounds coming from me. I would let, I would rather them perform Chili than have to hear Water. That's how much I don't like this song. If they really loved me, they would perform Trauma, but they won't. It's just so boring. There is no, it's giving me nothing. And I can't believe that they ended the album with that song, which is so upsetting. Like you listened to those songs and you said, we should end the album with Water. Who made that stupid ass decision? Because they obviously should have ended it with rain. Obviously. It should have gone candy, water, rain, so that at least we end the album on a good note. I don't like this song at all. It, it's giving me nothing. And the stage. Oh, don't even get me started on the stage for it. Dance. Boring. Outfits. The worst outfits I think I've ever seen them in. Why are they dressed like they're going to the desert? 
but not even in like cool desert clothes. They're just wearing like sand colored clothes, like a t-shirt and a vest. I hate those outfits. I hate them so bad. They are the worst, especially coming after Monster when they had those beautiful purple outfits, gorgeous outfits, styled impeccably. And then they said, let's pull out some like army surplus store reject items and send them out on stage hate those outfits i hate those outfits i hate that stage i hate that song and i cannot believe i have to see it live and that's the worst part is that i'm gonna have to pretend to like that song because i love s coops and i want to support him and that's the thing is that i want to support the, the hip-hop team and i want them to like feel good energy from the crowd but i cannot quell this hater flame within my heart i hate this song it's so bad there is nothing I think that brings value. Again, I think that the pre-chorus is okay. I think S. Coops' flow is kind of interesting, but in no way is, is any of this exceptional work. They have many songs back in their discography that are better than this song. So I'm really hoping that they reevaluate which Judas songs they're going to put on the on the U.S. tour and that they were just doing this in Goyang because they wanted to like tease the new album. I hope that they understand they don't need to perform Water just because it's their most recent song. I think that they need to go back and do Fire and Monster or Game Boy. I know that they already did Game Boy, so maybe Fire and Monster. I'll even take La La Lee. I'll even take Monster and La La Lee. Please, for the love of God, do not make me go to the concert and pretend to like water. I also just think, once again, it's crazy, considering that they have a song called Fire. They have a song called Fire, now they have a song called Water. And water is bad! I just, it really pisses me off. It really pisses me off, because I just, that's another thing is that, like, they're good. I know that they're good. I know that they can make good music, and that they have made good music. It's just, like, it really hurts when it feels like they're going backwards. It's like you would think that, like, later on in their career, they would get better at making music, and then I feel like this is just, like, such a misfire. Like, what are we doing? And I think listening to the song straight, it makes me hate it more. Like, at least when they're on stage, even if they're in ugly outfits doing not really choreo, you can look at their pretty faces and be like, wow, look at their face. It's serving. If you're just listening to the song, it's giving nothing. It's giving nothing. Anyways, I simply must shut up now. I've harped on this song long enough. You understand my feelings. I don't like this song at all. Um, yeah, yeah, this, this album came out. <sighs> I said what I said. And I said what I said at the beginning. I told you I was not excited for this album because I thought it was going to be that good. I Again, I wish I was proven wrong, and yet here we are. I knew that I was going to like Rain because I saw their performance for it, and I was like, this song's exceptional. But I feel the same about... Well, I guess I, I have better feelings about Candy now, especially now that I can hear Jungon's parts, and I love and miss Jungon so much. Candy is a good song. It's not my favorite, but it's a good song. Rain is an exceptional song. I feel like those are the only two good songs on this album. I feel like every other song I could have done without, which sucks because now they're about to go on tour and perform these songs, and I wish that they did it! I wish that they did it! I wish that they put out this album after the tour, so that I didn't have to hear any of these songs. Like, would it have been a shame to not see Rain live? Yes, but I also know that the performance team has many other really good songs, and I would have been fine. I think this album is so, not just mediocre, but like actively not good, <laughs> which is which is saying something. I I have to simply blame DJ Khaled. I simply have to blame DJ Khaled or whoever's decision it was to make DJ Khaled a part of this album because I really feel like him and his negative energy is dragging the whole album down. Dare I say this is my least favorite 17 album. Crazy, I know. But like, their album, and that's saying a lot because as if you've seen my other videos about 17's recent comebacks, I have not been loving their comebacks recently. So this is, I feel like we're not, we're, we're going down. And I worry, when are we gonna go back up? I want another good album, um, but I don't feel like I've gotten one in a while, so I don't know. I wish I liked this album, but I didn't. I wish I could lie to you and say that I love these songs, but I, I don't. I think Rain is such a good song, but I would have been more than happy to sacrifice Rain if it meant I did not have to hear Water and Love Money Fame on this tour, because I dislike those songs so greatly. And I think that they are a waste of our time. Because that's another thing, is that Seventeen, they've been a group for 10 years. They have 10 years worth of music. There are so many songs that are great that will simply just like, for logistical time reasons, we just can't put all of their great songs on the set list because we only have so much time. So whenever I see a song that's bad get a spot on the set list, it pisses me off because I'm like, you have hundreds of other songs that you could have chosen. Hundreds of other songs that are great and deserved their time and moment in the sun. And you gave it to water 
and love money, fame, and pay my help and campfire. I'm sick and tired of them performing campfire. I'm sick and tired of them performing campfire. Crucify me if you must. But I'm sick and tired of them performing campfire. They perform it at like every fucking concert because they're like, oh my god, it's such a sweet I, I, I don't like that song. I think it's boring and I'm tired of hearing it. But I digress. I just think it's crazy. Like, okay. I understand that like you can't always top your last album. Sometimes you have to put out a flop. Sometimes you have to put out a flop. Okay? You're always going to be working on something new. Not everything can hit. That's okay. But then you have to look at your entire discography and pick what gets to be performed live. And the fact that Water and Love Money Fame get to be performed live when they have so many other better songs in their discography pisses me off. Because why are we doing that? If we can pull out crazy songs from the vault like Lily Yabai, then we can pull out some good bangers from the archives. We do not need to perform the songs live just because they're new. We don't need it. We don't need it. Anyways, yeah, I, I was hoping that this album was going to be better than it was, and I unfortunately assessed it properly. <sighs> I'm hoping that one day we get another good Seventeen album. It's been a while, in my opinion, at least personally, since we've gotten a great Seventeen album. Um, we've gotten great Seventeen songs, but a great Seventeen album? It's been a hot minute. So I'm really looking forward to the day that that happens. You let me know what you think of this album. Obviously, my favorite song is Rain. It's the only great song on this album. Candy is good, but Rain is a great song. And I'm very happy that this album could give us Rain. I just wish that it didn't then need to give us everything else that it gave us. Because it gave us really nothing else. Once again, I still love Seventeen. I will continue to support them. Blah, 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 blah. I just wish that it, they made it easier to support them. I wish they put out better music. <laughs> But it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's just one album. Because also we get Ash on this tour. This tour is going to give us Ash live. So, you know, silver lining, silver linings. <laughs>